Okay, good morning. My name is Michael. Hi, Michael. Okay. May I ask what your name is and where you were born? Yes, my name is Shirley Hideko Nakata Klonch. Uh, I was born April 22nd, 1943 in Jerome, Arkansas. Okay. Do you know what life was like for your parents before Pearl Harbor occurred? My parents were, I would say, young couple uh, with a young family. Uh, they were they worked as a, a farm labor, and um, uh, I I really don't know what their life was like, but I know they had three boys, so they were a very busy family. They had. Um, my brother Ray, who was born 1939, so he would have been around uh, maybe six years old. And then I have another brother that was born 1939, and then I have another brother that was born 1941. So when this occurred, uh, they had three small children that they have to take, you know, uh, worry about. So it must have been very devastating for them, is what I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your brothers were U.S. citizens, but how about your parents? My mother was born in Fresno, California. She was what you call Nise, which is a second generation. My father uh, was born in Hiro, Hawaii, but actually he was raised in Japan, and he came to this country to be a laborer on the farm. And so he was what you call Issei, the first generation. Mm -hmm. um, do you know if any of your parents or the rest of your family faced any discrimination before the attack? I don't think so because they were farmers, so they were amongst uh, all the farmers. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think there were. Okay. Um, do you know how your parents felt about the attack on Pearl Harbor? Let me tell you one thing about our family. Uh, our family is very quiet. Um, they went through a lot during that time and they really never expressed their feeling about the war. So I grew up not knowing what they had encountered during that time and uh, until later in the years as I got older I found a few of the things that had happened and um, and it might be because it was a very difficult time for them that they did not want to talk about it right. very difficult okay so this is a personal question for you. Like, mm -hmm. How do you feel about the U.S. government calling citizens like your family non-aliens? Uh, well, let me tell you a story about our family. Um, non-aliens. Um, we were a family with no country, actually. And I don't know whether you know the questionnaire they passed at the camp, but there was a question, uh, a sheet of questions, and there were questions number 27 and 28. And because my father was involved with the Issei, which is a first generation, uh, those two questions were answered no, no. So they were considered no-no boys. It was about being royal to um, our country. And I really have no idea why my father answered question no-no, but that caused um, our future destination at what was to come by answering no-no. Uh, it was a maybe a mistake, I really don't know, but it did change our whole entire life. In what way? Well, uh, we were in uh, 
Jerome, Arkansas. And after those questions were answered, we were detained to another camp named Tule Lake, which is in Northern California. And it was more highly guarded camp. I want to call it prison, a uh, camp. And they were called uh, this royal people. And so it was uh, not a good place to be. And many of those people who were, the, uh, who were considered disroyal were um, denounced their citizenship to the United States because I think they were upset with the government, perhaps. And so as a result, we were detained to, or um, we had to go to Japan. We lost the country, the United States. Our, uh, my mother was born in Fresno, California. She's American. My three brothers were American, and I was born in America. And because of the situation, my poor mother and our whole entire family had to go to Japan. And I don't know whether that was by choice or because the government said we were disroyal and that we need to go back to Japan. So we were re detained to Japan and um, it was a very sad time, I'm sure, for my parents. Yes. Yeah. And um, another sad thing about our family was that uh, when we went to Tule Lake, um, I had a brother, my second, um, the second born brother got run over when he was five years old by army truck. They were just playing balls. The boys were playing balls. And um, so that was a very bad, traumatic experience for my parents. And on top of that, they got deported to Japan. So their life was very, um, I don't know what the word is, you know, very upsetting, especially to my mother because she's an American born here and they have to go back to Japan. And um, I just remember uh, they were telling me that when they arrived to Japan, because we were American, we went, you know, uh, with all the clothes that we had, and there were American clothes, like Levi jeans and all of that, and so we totally stood out. And, and um, the Japanese in Japan consider us to be American. So we were looked down, uh, a lot. We were not liked in, a, in the neighborhood. And um, so that was different, you know, here we were same nationality, but we were considered Americans. So I remember people staring at us, you know, when we walked down the street and I think my two brothers, uh, went to school and they were constantly picked on and fought. They had to fight all the time with the boys, you know, because they didn't like us. <laughs> so nobody ever knows that, you know, the life over there was not that easy for us. The transition was very difficult. So. Yeah, I'm sure that must, must have been tough. So Very essentially, tough. the United States stripped your family of their citizenship and forced you to face discrimination in Japan. I'm not really sure if I can, if you can say stripped because I think my father, by answering those questions, he took a choice, and those choice caused him a lot of distress in our family. Okay. Um. Do you know what your family did with any other belongings before they were put into camp? Well, being a young family, as they were, and they were farm labor, I don't really, honestly, I don't think they really had a possession of any, any kind. 
to say they didn't own anything, you know. So they were just starting their life uh, in Fresno, California, and I, I would think that eventually they were hoping that they would become a, you know, own their own farm. But they were just starting a young family, and they really didn't have much of a possession. I do have a, a grandma and grandfather who is. Uh, had land, a farm, and they were very fortunate because they were able to go back to their farm. They did not lose it, they went back to their farm. So in that sense, we were very fortunate. Do you remember your parents telling you anything about the camps they were in before you were born? Uh, as I said, my parents did not express anything about the camp. I think the problem with them was they were trying to put behind what was so bad there, which was losing their son. Um, and it was so horrible. I, I, and and, and, and as, as I was growing up, I, kn I knew that that was a bad subject because it was a very difficult time, so we never really questioned because I didn't want to bring up the bad time. So we didn't really talk about it very much. And I think we just want to, they just want to put it behind and go forward. They really didn't talk about bad things. They really didn't. <clears throat> After the war ended, did your family stay in Japan or were they allowed to come back to the United States? Um, after the war, we went back to Japan. Uh, we actually lived with my father's uh, father, so we lived with the grandfather. Um, I'm sorry, what was the question again? I kind of lost train After of thought. After the war, did your, parent, did your family just decide to, to stay in Japan? Okay. My brother, my oldest brother, Ray, was very sick when we arrived to Japan. He, uh, they were in the worst recession ever, the Japanese, very poor. Uh, the water was not good. The food was, there was very small amount of food. People were begging from the neighborhood for food because nobody had anything. They were poor. And so uh, my brother, Ray, um, got very sick. Um, so my mother apparently had called my grandparents in Fresno and asked to have my brother come back to the United States. He cannot tolerate their water and their food. And he just was sick, you know, just, he had chicken pox and just all kinds of <laughs> problem, physical problems. So uh, my thinking is that if my brother was to come back, I'm sure their intention was to come back because obviously when they arrived to Japan with their recession that they were having, there were no job, no food, nothing. It was just the worst place to be. And so my parents, I remember from the time I remember, they were working and they were trying to raise enough money for us to come back to the United States. So it took eight years for us to, you know, come back. It, it took eight years for us to come back. So, uh, but we eventually were able to come back. So it took you a while for your family to get back to normal life yes. before internment? Yeah. And since your parents said, they like to keep quiet and everything. They didn't really express their perspective on the U.S. after the war. 
um, I, I knew they never said anything negative about U.S. Um, that's one thing about my parents. They never were negative. Um, I, I think what they told me was that it was necessary because of the situation. Uh, we were ridiculed in the United States and it was for our own protection that we were put into the camp. And so they, they, they were just never negative. They just accept the fact they have to do what they have to do. You know, that's just the way they were. So would you say your parents actually forgave the U.S. for everything they did? Oh, my parents. Well, my, um, I, 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 like I said, I never saw negativity. So I think they just accepted the way it had to be, you know, for us to be in the camp. Um, I don't think they were bitter. The only bitterness I can think is that they lost their son. And um, I never saw negativity, never. I, that's why I never knew there were so many bad things that were, that happened because they never expressed, you know, about negative. Or gov our government, I think they just thought that they were protecting us okay, well that's by putting us in the camp because there were a lot of bad things that were happening, I suppose, you know, from what I read, that uh, a lot of people disliked the Japanese. I know um, when I first came back from the United States uh, in 1953, um, I remember and I didn't understand because my first language was Japanese so when I came back at 10 years old I did not speak English and so but I remember word Jap you're a Jap you're a Jap and I didn't I didn't know what that meant you know uh, until later in the years <laughs> you know but I didn't know what that meant and so you know there were a lot of uh, people not liking the Japanese, so um, I, I was fortunate. I was young enough not to know that. I I never felt dislike. I mean, I never felt. I guess because my parents never talked, you know, put us in a negative way. It was always go forward, you know, be positive, go forward, never negative. So. I never felt discriminated. Even when I went to high school, you know, where um, there were only a few Japanese people at South High School, um, I never felt different. I don't know why. I, I just never felt different. I never felt like I was Japanese and I was being discriminated, you know. I guess I was lucky. I never felt that. Well, so. I think your family had a very good way of looking upon it. I think so. Uh, and like I said, maybe they didn't want to talk about it because it, maybe it was a very painful time for them. And maybe the decisions that maybe they made, you know, like a no-no voice, maybe it was nothing to be proud of. So uh, I've never heard that. I never heard them discuss about anything except you know, just moving forward. They were just trying to, when we came back, I know my parents worked very, very hard uh, and uh, as a farmer. Uh, and uh, they were just trying to uh, get their life together. So, you know, <laughs> but never, nothing ne negative. Never. So good thing <laughs> okay well thank you for sharing all of this with oh us. okay um I, I guess I just want to let you know that um because my father denounced his citizenship um it took him three tries <laughs> to 
reinstate his citizenship. And he finally uh, got his citizenship back when he was 75. And he was very proud of that. So, and we were very proud of him for uh, getting his citizenship back. But he tried very, very hard. <laughs> so, anyway. I, I hope I told all the stories. I just wanted you to know that in Japan, when we arrived there, they were very, uh, seg you know, uh, not segregated, but they were very um, negative towards American Japanese. And um, and so we had we had we were at a place where we had no country. We were. Um, and when we came back here, some of the people were negative towards us. But fortunately, uh, I surpassed that. Yeah, I didn't let that worry me. So. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for everything. And thank you especially oh, for your sure. time and your story. Oh, sure, no problem. I hope some of it was interesting to you. That um, it it that that changed our whole lifestyle from uh, coming from United States. Uh, it, life is very difficult in Japan. Uh, uh, we lived in a, a area that was um, I would say more of a, a, a country. Uh, uh, everything was so difficult you know, for my mother, especially. And so it, I, I suppose coming from United, born in the United States and have to go live in Japan was um, very, diff very difficult lifestyle. So, anyway, we, you know, we're fine now. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay. Well, thank you again mm -hmm. for sharing your insight sure. a very important part of our history. Sure.